So when morale's down at work, or there's just been a really down week at work, and morale just isn't there, what companies usually like to do, I know it's a running meme, is they like to throw pizza parties. Well, I'm sorry, CrowdStrike. I highly doubt a pizza party is going to save you from all the issues that happened from last week. If you guys didn't hear, it kind of would surprise me if you guys didn't hear because this is, it was just not good. They basically brought the world to a grinding halt when it came to airlines. I know some countries had problems with 911 responses. And on top of that, hospitals were affected, which is kind of scary to think about. But... CrowdStrike did one better, and they tried to boost that morale. So let's get into this article. It's from BBC, the British Broadcasting Channel. Not that BBC, you dirty bastard. Let's get into it. <coughs> CrowdStrike backlash over $10 apology voucher. All right, let's keep going. CrowdStrike is facing a fresh backlash after giving staff and firms they work with a $10 Uber Eats voucher to say sorry for the global IT outage that caused chaos uh, across airlines, banks, and hospitals last week. What? Yeah, dude, it was bad. If you guys didn't look into it, um, I could probably find it, but I don't feel like finding it right now. But there was a um, radar image of air traffic over the United States like an hour before the outage and then during the outage it was crazy at how fast all those planes got on the ground the cybersecurity company whose software updated on friday uh, update on friday affected 85 million computers worldwide sent an email uh, to its partners that it recognized the incident has caused extra work no you have cost a lot of people a lot of money homie not just extra work because supposedly you had to like they had to put IT people on the ground to fix this issue. It wasn't like it was like, you know, they could push the button and undo it like you most people would think. To express our gratitude, your next cup of coffee or late night snack is on us. CrowdStrike wrote, directing people to use a code that uh, to access a $10 credit. Okay, but this is the best part. Um, where is it? Um, <laughs> but the gesture was greeted by uh, D-Rise by some. One Reddit user branded it as an absolute clown show, while another one said it. I literally wanted to drive my car off a bridge this weekend, and they bought me a coffee. Nice. I mean, at least you'll be awake when you do that. Hopefully, you don't drive it off. Um, one LinkedIn user claimed to be a cloud, cloud, crowd strike partner said that the gesture of a cup of coffee or Uber Eats credit as an apology doesn't seem to make up for its tens of thousands lost in man hours and customer trust due to the July 19th incident. CrowdStrike confirmed to the BBC that it sent the voucher to teammates and partners who helped customers deal with the impact of the outage. But some people said they uh, had received the voucher, but also took to social media to say it did not work. Why didn't it work, you might ask? Uber flagged it as fraudulent because of the high usage rate. So you mean to tell me that one of the largest cybersecurity firms in the world <laughs> that messed up last week sent all these vouchers out to all these individuals just for Uber to flag it as fraudulent and basically deny you your pizza or your cup of coffee. By the way, I did pull up uh, Little Caesars here. And it appears that you cannot buy a pizza for $10. I mean, you can buy it for 10 bucks, but after delivery fees, and especially because I believe on average, the markup rate for most of these things is like 20, you know, 20 to 30 percent, which is why I don't use DoorDash or Uber Eats or Postmates. None of them save your money. Go out, get in your car like the old fashioned way and just go buy it yourself. Um, like I said, most of these pizzas are that's 15 dollars for a thin crust and the little bites. But just for a pizza alone, I don't even know why Little Caesars like that was my go to. You used to be able to go to Little Caesars, get a five dollar, you know, pizza and call it good. It looks like the cheapest one, ten ninety nine, uh, slice and sticks six ninety nine, but you're getting down here to the pizzas. They're almost on the same price level as Domino's or Pizza Hut, which is insane to me. Anyways, enough looking at pizza. I am kind of hungry. It is almost lunchtime, you guys. By the way, don't forget to drink plenty of water. I know it's hot out there. It comes amid growing questions over the financial compensation CrowdStrike customers and people impacted by the outage will be claiming. The firm has pledged to improve 
its software test after a uh, faulty content update for Windows systems caused the mass IT outage. Truth be told, it to me is mind-boggling to think that there's one cybersecurity firm that holds that much power over that many computers, pushes one update or whatever caused this, right? Because I don't believe they're ever going to actually come out and say exactly what caused this. But push this update and just bring all the computers to that grinding hole. It was a mis uh, mistake resulted in problems for banks, hospitals, and airlines as millions of PCs displayed blue, <laughs> blue screen of death. In detailed reviews of the incident published on Wednesday, CrowdStrike said there was a bug in a system designed to ensure software updates work properly. CrowdStrike said the glitch meant problematic content data and, um, and a file went undetected, which that's not a good look. You're a cybersecurity firm. You should be checking and double checking. The company said in a con uh, it could prevent the incident from happening again with better software testing and checks, including more security from developer, uh, developers, more scrutiny from developers. The faulty update crashed 8.5 million Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows computers around the world, and George Crutes, CrowdStrike's boss, has apologized for the impact of the outage. Well, I'm just going to put this out there. Like, we already saw one person step down and resign because of a uh, catastrophic failure. We're looking at the Secret Service right now. I don't see why he's even in a position of power. Now, granted, a lot of these people that do work in CEO and CFOs, which CFOs are number two in the company, they fail up. And it is disgusting to see how many of these individuals in companies like this who will, I guarantee you, he will probably step down in the next month or two and then be a CEO of a different company and collect the bag. A perfect example of that is the guy for Unity. The old CEO of Unity was the old CEO of, um, I believe it was EA Games, where he brought EA Games, like, crashing down, like, and then turned around and was the CEO of Unity. It doesn't make sense to me. They just, I feel like they just play shell games with these individuals that they put in charge of big corporations. But cybersecurity experts told BBC News that the review uh, review revealed that the firm made a major mistake. What's clear from the post-mortem is that they didn't seem to have the right guardrails in place to prevent this type of incident or reduce the risk of it occurring, says cybersecurity consultant Daniel Card. So you're telling me this is 100% on CrowdStrike, so you don't have to have the scrutiny from everybody else. Okay, okay. His thoughts were echoed by cybersecurity researcher Kevin Beaumont, who said that the key lesson from the CrowdStrike review is that the firm doesn't test its waves. What? You mean to tell me you're not testing your, your patches? They just deployed to all customers all at once, so it's called a rapid response update, which was obviously a huge mistake. You don't say there, Kev. But Sam Kirkman from cybersecurity for NetSpy told BBC that the review showed that CrowdStrike took steps to prevent the outage. What? Was it after, like, the first couple computers started uh, going missing, like, started going blue screen and then you were trying to stop it? I don't know. He said that these steps have been likely affected to prevent incidents on countless occasions prior to last week. Congress calls. Bro. This is the part that really blows my mind. So mind you, most of these big corporations actually have insurances in place to ensure that if there is a mass casualty incident like this where they are on the hook for a shit ton of money, insurance companies will cover X amount, right? That's what insurances are meant for. But let's take a look at how much, according to this BBC article, how much damage they did. According to the insurance form, Parametrics, the top 500 U.S. companies by revenue, excluding Microsoft, have faced some $5.4 billion in financial losses from this outage. It said that only $540 million to $1.08 billion of those losses were insured. So that means basically if they're covered on the top end here for the $1.08, we'll just say one, you know, to make it easy. There's still CrowdStrike's potentially on the hook still for $4.4 billion. 4.4! I would not be surprised if um, they end up shuttering doors soon or they attempt to change their name. 
The U.S. government has opened an investigation into Delta Airlines' handling of the outage after it continued to cancel hundreds of flights. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm an air traffic controller by trade. My 9 to 5, I'm an air traffic controller. So when it comes to dealing with aviation, I know how, I know the ins and outs of this. I've done aviation now for 14 years. You don't need computers to allow, you know, tracking of air flights, if that makes any amount of sense. You can call from one flight station to another flight station or from one destination to the next destination. Hey, departure this and go from there. Now, I know Delta Airlines and a lot of these big corporations much rather have everything documented via computer. Now, most phone lines are recorded. Let's continue. Delta, Air, uh, Delta Chief Executive Ed Bastian said in a letter to uh, customers on Wednesday, it expects the airlines to make full recovery by Thursday. That means they're working people overtime, baby. CrowdStrike is set to face further scrutiny with Mr. Kruitz called to testify in front of Congress about the outage. Guarantee he's going to be like, you know, the Secret Service lady. Uh, I'll get back to you. I don't know, you know. It's going to be a bunch of plausible deniability, and he's going to try to push it off on other people because he is the CEO. This is uh, this incident must serve as a broad warning about national security risk associated with the network de uh, dependency, wrote the House Committee on the Homeland Security in a writer, uh, letter to the company on Monday. It gave CrowdStrike until Wednesday evening to schedule a hearing. I'm kind of interested to see where this goes. But let's go full screen. <laughs> but to me, it's very crazy that a company this big and seeing three different IT experts in this article talking about it, two of them being like, yeah, you know, it's kind of their fault. And the third one being like, well, you know, they prevented blah, blah, blah. No, it should never happen like this in the first place. Like I said, it's just, it just doesn't make sense that this big of a country, company has this amount of computers slash whatever you want to call it that they're in charge of and they epically failed. This is bad. Anyways, you guys, don't forget to mash that like button. Comment down below. Do you think pizza parties really help with anything? Or do you think it's just one of those uh, memes or memes as you kids call it? that uh, we like to run with. And don't forget, guys, subscribe. We're on our way to 8,000, man. I can't do this kind of stuff without y'all. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. Until the next time, I will catch you later. Also, if you got any questions about aviation, man, drop them down below. I can answer them. I mean, I'm, like I said, I've been doing it for a couple years now. Anyways, you guys, take it easy.